In October last year, ahead of the UK hosting the UN's COP26 summit, the government published its net zero strategy. A key commitment for transport was that the government would introduce a zero emission vehicle mandate, setting targets for a percentage of manufacturers' new car and van sales to be zero emission each year from 2024. The government is looking to introduce a scheme similar to that in California, where the government sets an annual requirement for credits expressed as a percentage of overall sales which rise over time. Each zero emission vehicle generates a set number of credits. Manufacturers must therefore sell an increasing proportion of zero emission vehicles each year to meet a rising requirement for ZEV credits. The proposed scheme for the UK focuses on certificates rather than credits, but again will place legally binding targets on vehicle manufacturers for a percentage of new vehicle sales to be zero emission. The government is proposing two separate certificate schemes, one for cars and one for vans. Both will start in 2024, but recognising that van uptake to zero emission vehicles is further behind that of cars, the government is proposing that for cars, they will start at 22% in 2024, rising to 52% in 2028, 80% by 2030 and then reaching 100% by 2035. For vans, this would start at 8% of sales being zero emission in 2024, rising to 34% in 2028, 52% in 2030, then slowly ramping up by around a factor of 10% each year to reach 100% by 2035. The consultation addresses a number of key questions around how certificates are allocated and whether there are certain types of vehicles or vehicle use that could attract a higher number of credits. For example, should more certificates be awarded to vehicles that are lower in price, smaller, lighter, have longer range or more power efficiency? Or if they are used for shared use, such as car clubs, to offer mobility as a service or where they are wheelchair accessible? A key question is about how the CO2 regulations operate whether it's linked to the mandate and whether the CO2 emissions regulation stays static up to 2035 or becomes tighter over time. This is our opportunity to shape the design of the mandate to ensure that appropriate safeguards are built in that protect BVRLA's members' interests. The BVRLA will work closely with the government as it develops its thinking and proposals on the design of the mandate. We'll be hosting a forum with members to start working through some of the questions in the technical consultation and are happy to arrange one-on-one -on -one meetings with members to discuss this further.